Uh, good afternoon to all. Uh, thank you, Andre, for the introduction. Uh, as Andre indicated, my name is Ian Howe. I am the program manager responsible for the Global Fund program at Right to Care. Uh, I guess it's always difficult to speak after lunch, uh, considering that people are well fed. And unfortunately for me, I don't have chocolate. So I hope the sweets, <laughs> I hope the sweets that have been shared around, you know, will keep everyone energized. So without further ado, I'm just going to give a, a high level, uh, you know, view of the contributions of the Global Fund uh, in the South African context. But I'll mainly focus on the PWID program, uh, considering that um, these are the discussions that are quite central uh, during the course of uh, this week. So just to give you an outline, uh, I'll obviously start by acknowledging all the partners that have contributed greatly in the success of uh, our fairly young uh, program. And I mean, uh, and when I say fairly young, uh, really we took over a project uh, from a pilot study, and out of that uh, we have made you know significant uh, uh, you know inroads into uh, addressing challenges that you know uh, are faced with uh, people who inject drugs. And at the same time, uh, I'll share with you the South African Global Fund program and uh, some of the program outputs that we have realized in the very short space of time that we have been implementing as a principal recipient. Uh, then I'll end off with some of the lessons that we have learned and share a couple of conclusions and some recommendations you know, that I think are quite pertinent in uh, continuing uh, successful PWID programs. So I've got a lot of people and entities that, you know, I could have put on the list, uh, but uh, please don't um, feel left out as long as your organization is uh, connected to one of the uh, key people that I've highlighted, then know that I'm also acknowledging your, uh, your contributions towards our program. So I'll start with our two uh, sub-recipients, uh, ANOVA Health Institute and TBHIV Care. I think we must applaud them for the excellent work that they have contributed. Uh, in terms of addressing prevention programs for people who inject drugs. Out Wellness is also a major partner in this, uh, together with Deben University of Technology. Uh, Monique, we thank you for your assistance. I think the bulk of the things that we have modeled on our Global Fund pro program have been you know, outputs that came from the work that has been happening in Deben uh, University of Technology, together with the uh, uh, city of... Um, City of Tswane and Pretoria University. Then, obviously, we have to thank our program beneficiaries. Some of us, some of them are, are with us in this room. I would like to also acknowledge CDC, the Department of Social Development, uh, SANAC for their continued technical assistance, and lastly, our funder, who is the Global Fund, for availing the resources and the technical expertise to implement uh, this intervention. So. As a way of starting, uh, I think as an organization, we have had uh, a very interesting journey over the past uh, uh, seven years as a Global Fund principal recipient. Birthed in 2002, nine years later, we managed to secure a 16 million grant for the Global Fund to act as a principal recipient. Our focus at that time was really looking at the general population where we're providing integrated tuberculosis and HIV services. By 2013, we further secured funding of in excess of $49 million. And this time around, our focus was now moving in the direction of the new global fund strategy, which was really putting more attention and more focus on key populations. And as such, we steered our focus to farm workers, inmates in correctional services, uncircumcised men, and for the first time, we also uh, provided um, uh, work uh, prevention uh, services for men who have sex with men and the larger LGBTI community. Additionally, we worked hand in hand with the National Department of Health to continue supporting people living with HIV. 
By 2016, when we entered into the new funding model, our focus was now specialized on targeting men who have sex with men. And for the first time in South Africa, we had a global fund program that was really focusing on people who inject drugs. And we also further continued to support people living with HIV. And that funding was in excess of $36 million for a duration of three years. So it's quite interesting that uh, when we got this grant for PWID, uh, I think it was a first for many. But what has been astonishing has been some of the inroads and some of the successes you know, that we have generated uh, over the past two and a half years. So with only 16 months left under this grant, I can testify that we have more than 1,000, if not 100,000, of testimonies from people that we engage with on a daily basis who have benefited from our program. But just to share with you, I think some of the issues that you know, are really strong to my heart. This was a testimony from a gentleman in Cape Town, and he indicated that since joining OST, his life has changed for the better. He's no longer dependent on heroin, and he's now in touch with how he feels, but much importantly, he's now reunited with his family. I think I should applaud the team from uh, Cape Town who really uh, uh, provided uh, services for this gentleman. The other uh, testimony uh, that I got was also from another uh, gentleman who indicated that I've started the process of rebuilding my life. Today, I choose methadone over heroin. Thirdly, I'm no longer seen as an addict, but as a human being. But most importantly, the last one which really touched my heart was from a young lady who indicated that it's good to be called mommy again. I think this program really goes beyond numbers, indicators, and reaching targets. But it's an intervention that has seen the reuniting of people, reuniting with their families, people feeling human again, families starting to recognize each other, but at the same time, their quality of life being improved. So in terms of how the program came to, came to be, our aim really was to reduce the number of new infections, new HIV infections, and any other associated uh, infections, and at the same time, to reduce the further spread of HIV amongst uh, PWID. Uh, my colleague who is going to speak after me, Andrew, will really give you more details. Uh, in terms of the genesis uh, around the model, modeling studies that took place uh, to better determine the size estimation of uh, people who inject drugs in South Africa. So by 2013, uh, based on a study by Peterson and others, uh, there was an estimation that approximately 67,000 uh, individuals in South Africa are injecting uh, drug users. But obviously, this was just based on looking at existing major metropolitan cities like Cape Town, Johannesburg, Durban, uh, together, is, um, um, uh, together with uh, uh, Bloemfontein. Then in a UNODC study, uh, which uh, my colleague was going to speak, uh, Andrew, uh, where he had a sample of 450 uh, PWID, I think there were some very interesting fact facts that came out uh, from that uh, small sample. So of those 450 that he worked with, one in five were living with HIV, a quarter of them were sharing needles, a quarter engaged in sex work, and half of them used condom the last time they had sex. So this really goes to show the level of uh, magnitude in terms of why we need to have such interventions that minimize risk in terms of HIV transmission, as well as HCV uh, transmission. Of that group, the HCV prevalence was 45%, and again, Andrew will give more light in terms of the outputs that they have generated from their HCV studies. Going back in 2011, uh, I think South Africa, uh, through SANAC, hosted a key populations uh, summit, and in that summit, there were three uh, major findings 
that were pertinent in the development of key population strategies together with uh, specific key population HIV plans, uh, like how South Africa has been leading in such um, uh, 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 programs. The first one was really to look at uh, uh, addressing issues around discrimination, prejudice, and moral loading, especially from the healthcare uh, worker perspective. And it was noted that discrimination, prejudice, and moral loading, they still contribute as the major barriers in terms of accessing health services. And as a result, key populations, they feel discriminated, they feel that their confidentiality is breached, and at the same time, they fear that they may be arrested, and henceforth, they are afraid to disclose their practice due to those factors. And lastly, there was an, uh, uh, a finding that really looked at how there is a lack of professional training on specific health needs uh, of key populations to healthcare workers. So out of that report, the key populations, key solutions, I think South Africa has been uh, on the forefront in terms of developing a national strategic plan that is really focused on key populations and addressing their needs uh, as per uh, uh, the different uh, types of uh, uh, services that they require. So our Global Fund program really is designed as per the IDUIT. I'm sure many of you are quite aware of this, uh, where we have like a five-point plan, uh, the first being uh, community empowerment, uh, the second creating a legal framework that allows or mitigates or minimizes human rights uh, abuses as well as stigma and, and discrimination. Thirdly, the health and um, support services where training and capacity building is provided to healthcare service uh, workers. Then fourthly, we need to design, I mean we designed a, deliv a service delivery approach that was evidence-based, that was data-driven to ensure that um, uh, programs really reach to the uh, uh, people that are in need. And lastly, issues around program management through monitoring and evaluation really contributed in the design of the program. The comprehensive package, I'm sure we are all aware of it, uh, based on the WHO recommendations. Uh, the only exception is that uh, on the number nine there, I mean number 10, the 10th point, uh, it's uh, methadone instead of uh, distribution of uh, naloxone in the South African context. Uh, so, one of the things that you know, we have realized is that irrespective of uh, how one identifies as a, key, as a key population, there are certain commonalities and overlapping risk factors that cut across. On an individual uh, perspective, for PWID, you realize that sharing injecting needles is a very common uh, overlapping uh, risk factor that our clients continue to, to, to face. And it is important that needles and syringes are provided in uh, uh, enough supply to avert any possibilities of sharing. Stigma and discrimination continues to be a societal risk, and we need to put in policies, we need to put in measures, we need to put in uh, programs that really address stigma and discrimination. Thirdly, having to buy drugs from dangerous places or dangerous uh, people also contributes as an environmental risk. And lastly, under the structural risk, you find that uh, there's a lack of access to healthcare based on the issues that I've obviously previously um, uh, uh, highlighted too. In terms of the Global Fund uh, program location, uh, the interventions are provided in uh, five uh, provinces. Uh, Western Cape, right here where we are, we are in the city of Cape Town Metro, and TBHIVK is providing services there. In Nelson Mandela Bay, we have uh, TBHIV care uh, providing services in that metro. In Etiquini District, in KwaZulu Natal Province, uh, TBHIV care is also uh, providing uh, services there under uh, the Global Fund. And in the city of Johannesburg, we've got ANOVA that's also providing services. Now, let's look at uh, some of the outputs that you know, we have generated from September 2016 to date. In terms of reaching clients, uh, we have seen over 5,500 clients that have been reached with a comprehensive package. Of those, 86% have been provided with HCT, and 26% of them 
uh, had a HIV uh, uh, positivity reading. In terms of needles and syringes, we have distributed 940,000 uh, across all the districts that I've mentioned. And lastly, uh, of the 100 people that we were set to provide OST, currently we are sitting at 58 people that have been on OST for more than six months uh, and, and over. So we anticipate that by the time we get to April uh, 2019, we would have reached um, uh, the 100 uh, people who have been on the program for a duration of um, uh, six months. I think what is important on the OST uh, is that it's only a year-old program, which started in September of 2017. And uh, TBHIVK, I think uh, they were the first of the blocks. And then when ANOVA also followed through, uh, we've started to see uh, the rise in terms of um, the very low numbers you know, that we were uh, targeting. So lastly, let me end by the lessons that we have learned. Uh, I think the first really is to ensure that uh, there is increased healthcare worker awareness uh, of issues that affect uh, key populations. Many a times the stigma and discrimination that um, uh, our clients faced is really based on a lack of awareness. We need to build programs that are data-driven, that are evidence-based, and that are competent, but most importantly, that are appropriate for the target um, uh, population. Healthcare services, they need to be responsive rather than reactive. And I think it's quite important that we've already started you know, discussions around how to uh, deal with um, uh, the increase of prevalence uh, in HCV. And I think it's such a very commendable uh, response that you know, all of us are really uh, uh, taking part in. And lastly, we need to create an operat operational guidelines uh, so that the services for HIV, HCV, STIs, TB, and all other programs um, uh, for key populations can be guided. So in conclusion, I think it's a very common statement that we are all aware of, that there's nothing for us without us. We need and we must continue having our uh, uh, project recipients heavily involved in the design of the uh, programs, in the decision making of the programs, and most importantly, in directing the way the programs should be implemented. We also need to have a high degree of support and commitment from governments, aid structures, development our partners, and civil society organizations to hold each other accountable uh, for the beneficiaries uh, that we service. And lastly, OST continues to be uh, a central element that is imperative in reaching the last 90 uh, of the UNA, UNA, UNAIDS uh, uh, targets. And we need to also include hepatitis C uh, in programs for uh, PWID uh, as co-infection uh, is now common and seems to be uh, on the rise. So with that, I thank you for your time.